Jay from Ecotech here with uh, Patrick Foster from Reef Wholesale. We're here at his facility, obviously uh, takes care of a lot of livestock, coral, fish, etc. One of the biggest things here at the facility and in our home aquariums is water testing. Yeah, so we test our tanks obviously for salinity a couple times per day. We test alkalinity daily. We test copper daily on our fish, and we test the calcium and magnesium uh, three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And one of the things which I've noticed about the way you test is you actually have a test station set up, and this test station has a number of things to make sure that even though you have a number of different people doing water testing, they're typically going to come to the same result because it's, you've taken some of the subjectivity out of the testing process, right? Yeah, we've, we've made it, we've standardized it to make it a little bit easier. Uh, we have all of our test kits in one area right up here. Uh, we keep a spare on hand at all times, so we never run out of any specific test kit. And we have our, our super low-tech uh, and, and kind of ghetto 2x12 uh, here that we drilled some holes in, and we take our samples from each system with the corresponding syringes and we bring it over here and we put it on the magnetic stirrer. Now the magnetic stirrer is a very cheap and probably a very, very useful tool for every store to have because when you have the magnetic stirrer, it takes out the variation from employee to employee on how much they shake the vial or if they shake it too much or too little or whatever else. So the magnetic stirrer, when you put your bean in and then you turn it on, will uh, we'll start spinning and create a nice cyclone in there. And this removes the, the greatest number of variables from doing your test kit and, and we'll eliminate variations between person to person uh, getting results. You, you presumably can walk around with this. Yeah, you carry this and, it and to load the it system, up. load it right. up, and then Bring you can actually go through and when you're doing your alkalinity test, you, you know, two drops of the reagent, you go two, 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 and then put the stirrer in, put it on the magnetic stirrer, you know, add your reagents, count the number of drops, and then we record our data on a on a spreadsheet here, which we keep as a paper copy, which we have out all the time. Uh, we've tried using apps before, and the problem is somebody has to always then go and look at the app. The advantage of having it out on a piece of paper that everybody can see is at any time you can walk into the back, you can look at the values that are on here, and, uh, and then you can see, okay, so how's it doing? You can see exactly what they are going back in history. We keep all the notes back. So it's what the values were, how much we dosed to bring it up, if we made adjustments on the dosing pump. For example, if the magnesium bin runs out overnight, then you come in the next day and the magnesium's a little low. You don't necessarily want to adjust your dosing pump, but you want to bring up the values. So then with that, you say, okay, I'm going to dose 100 grams of magnesium. That will bring me back into the right range. And you don't have to adjust your dosing pump. It's already tuned in to the right levels. Very cool. I also see people have stamps and, and their names. Some, some of the ladies at the shop, when they, when they uh, test, they have their own little stamp that they put on there, and everyone else fills in their name. And then we can tell who did the testing and if we're getting a different value. If, if uh, Mike tests on Monday and Friday and Lauren tests on Wednesday, and Mike's values are the same but Lauren's values are completely different, then we can go back and say, well, wait a minute, is there something wrong with your testing? You know, if we haven't made any changes and these two values at the beginning and end are the same, but in the middle they're different, why are they different? And then it lets us look at if people are doing the test right, if they're reading it wrong, and whatever, whatever else, which further removes variables with what people are doing. Just an interesting final point and anecdote on testing is that not to um, have any sexual discrimination in your workplace, but women are actually much better at testing than men, not just because they're more organized and, and typically harder working, etc. <laughs> but because yeah, we think we think that men are uh, most of them are partially colorblind, especially in the blue it's a spectrum. Fact. It's actually a fact. So when we're doing the copper test kit, uh, only the ladies are allowed to do it. There's one of the guys that are in here, and that's allowed to do it. And we we had it basically everyone in the shop do the copper test kit, and the guys got all completely different values. I'm not allowed to test copper and all the women got the exact same values. So, you know, when she says it's not the same color, boys, you better listen, because she's right and you're wrong. <laughs> I looked it up, it's actually true. The, um, 
color blindness is on the X chromosome, of which men have one, women have two. But you would think that would make women more likely, but in actuality, they're less likely because the odds of having um, the correct gene sequence or what have you is they're twice as likely, or they have two chances to uh, to have good color vision, whereas men only have one chance to have good color vision. So pretty interesting, and yeah. um, especially if you're running an agriculture facility, something to to watch out for in your testing. Especially with copper levels, your copper levels have to be very, very, very precise all the time in the right range in order for your copper to be effective. If it goes out of the right range, it could be toxic to the fish. If it goes too low, it's not going to be effective. Or it could be highly toxic to the coral, right? You are highly toxic <laughs> to the coral. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> all right. Well, that's some um, very interesting stuff. And I think it was, it, I think the community in particular is um, testing is something that should we should always be talking about all the time. So, um, oh, one thing too, if you if you're if you're doing a magnesium test kit, I'll pick on magnesium today, and all of a sudden you're getting a value that seems out to lunch. We will always open another magnesium test kit and test against that because uh, sometimes we have test kits that will work for a while and then suddenly have gone off. So it's another good reason to always have a spare test kit on hand. If you're getting a funky value and it's just not making sense, open another test kit and test it. And, and that, uh, that brings up a good point, too, about your, your literature. I mean, for instance, in your case, um, your, your longest tenure employees, I believe, are the ones doing the, the testing. Yes. But in the event that you have employees who are not that experienced, having values, um, range values that they should double check if what they're getting is outside of that range is a good way um, to, to highlight exactly what you're talking about. We have, we have them test once. If they get a funky value, something that's out of the right range, they have to test again. If they get the exact same value, it, basically we triple verify it. So if you test and it's in the wrong range, you have to test three times. If you get the same value all three times and it's completely out of that, the, the desired range, then we know that that's accurate, in which case, uh, in which case we need to take and, appropriate and that, action. And that's a, that's a really good procedure and one that if, if you have people who aren't that experienced, you might actually want to put right there on your, on your sheet. We certainly have had that experience in the office when we've had new uh, employees testing. They don't know what they're looking for, so... Um, when they get a value that is completely out of the range, it seems perfectly normal, maybe a problem or maybe an error with the way they're running their tests. That's Either right. way, you know, you should be aware of it, not just documenting some erroneous value. So very interesting. All right, Patrick, thank you Thanks, very Jay. much. That was, uh, <laughs> that was very <laughs> informative. <laughs>